Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Space Engineers, building this massive amount of ship with small blocks. So today I wanted to focus on the main part of the ship again, ignoring the interior once again. We'll get back to the interior and we actually do a bit of interior on the front end uh, later in the video. Uh, one of the things, or I guess the two things that I wanted to focus on in this video were redoing the thrust replacement and starting to detail the ship a little bit more starting with the front end. So we start going for a completely different design on the thrusters. What we're going for is a uh, two thrusters on either side of the ship and then one thruster in the middle. I think that makes sense. You'll see when it's done. So I thought of this pattern shortly after the end of the last episode and I just thought it would look a bit better and I wouldn't have that giant hanging thing under the, the ship, so bonus I guess, I didn't like it. Um, it kind of also has that Karelian Corvette kind of look to it, even though these thrusters are going to be much much bigger. One of the things that I wanted to achieve was still keeping that kind of rounded look to it, but bringing it closer to a nice looking ship. I need it to go, I need it to look like it goes forward in a sensible amount of speed. So the thrusters on the back need to look like they can push the ship forward sensibly. So it's basically all, all about looks for the thruster placement on the backs. Um, I also wanted to work in a lot more of a techy kind of feel to the ship. So keeping like somewhere between civ civilian, industrial, and technology, science, I guess. So keeping it like the amenities plain. So there will be restrooms and gorges and things and they're not going to be trying to hide them because that kind of the civilian feel of it. You're not trying to hide the things that you use normally, bedrooms and bathrooms and such and so on. Uh, but also labs and those kind of shapes that you would think was more sciencey or more futuristic-y, if that makes much sense. But also having that structure there that makes it feel a little bit more industrial. So more flat edges, the struts kind of help a lot with that industrial feel. And that's kind of what I attempt to do throughout the video, is kind of keep that strut feel, but also round some of the corners and don't try to over round or hide a lot of stuff. Because it is still, like you wouldn't spend more, a company wouldn't spend more money to hide stuff because it's a civilian thing. It's, yeah, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So this is trying to work out where exactly these uh, thrusters are going to be placed on the ship. Uh, these these markers don't help me much because I, I end up placing it back farther than I thought I would because I need to place it on top of everything here. Uh, when we get back here with detailing, we are going to do a lot of uh, molding, I guess massaging the back end of the ship into these thrusters. What's probably going to happen is there's going to be quite an abrupt move or bevel or whatever you want to call it uh, onto the thrusters. So kind of like, again, the Corellian Corvette where it kind of has the front end, the middle section, and then the, uh, the rear thrusters. There's these very distinct parts of the ship. That's kind of what we're going to end up doing with this thing. So this has ended up being really uh, inspired of the Creeling Corvette in the end. Um, I mean, the front end's very different, but at least the thruster placement and the kind of three-part placement as well. We also have a lot of uh, Constellation from Star Citizen influence in this. And I forget, I'm pretty sure it was, it was one of the early episodes where I had the inspiration picture for the front end. So I don't know if that's still in the description. It might be, it might not be. Depends on where I put it. Anyway, but with the orb kind of glass in the front end, and it actually comes out looking really good at the end of the episode. So stay tuned for that. Um, I wanted to do instead of instead of pulling it in the struts, I guess, or the 
scaffolding, I don't know what you want to call it at this point. The blocks around the thrusters or around the tanks, instead of pulling it in, making two rounder bits and then putting it in the middle, I went for these two kind of oval shapes, two pill shapes, and then the circle in the middle. And that I liked it a lot better than trying to make like be like twice as much curve, twice as many curves in the thing. Yeah. So it made it a lot easier. It's gonna make it a lot easier to work on later. The downside that we're gonna get from making these straight lines is they're gonna be boring straight lines. We're gonna have to find some way of sprucing them up. Um, we also go through a lot of a lot of kind of replacing and everything. Uh, I had to widen the gap between the top and the bottom thrusters to get to a three, not a two, because working in with even blocks in this game is horrid and just scary. So I try and keep it on, on an odd base. Uh, that is quite odd when you go for like, curves and things. Oh, side note, I don't know if we passed, I'm pretty sure we passed it already. Um, with the new update and the, the, whatever, skins for blocks, I guess, the, when they actually put in the make the blocks clean in vanilla, I'm pretty sure the edges are technically still there, but I have a mod that removes them, but they do have a profile or a paint version that you can paint the blocks with to be clean and actually get it cleaner than the mods do. So that's very interesting. However, the armor ramps lose their normal maps entirely. And normal maps, for those who don't know, are what give a, a textured surface the look of being rough or bumpy or having depth to it. So take the, the texture making it look not flat. So that's what the thrusters look like. I don't think I do much more work on it. No, I go back to work on the front end. And the front end changes a little bit. I actually like the amount that it changes and how the glass kind of works. I really didn't like this uh, glass that could have been round if the thing was round, but it ended up having to be oblong. And I just, I just didn't like it. It didn't make much sense. I also didn't like how the... Uh, bridge area felt very claustrophobic so we're going to be doing a lot of work on the front end to try and fix the front end and make it more accessible to a lot of people a lot of other people on it we also have to work in a lot of windows for the rest of the ship i have no idea how we're going to do that we're probably going to end up doing a lot of kind of balcony looking things we'll cut into the ship sharper than it curves and then put windows there probably going to do a uh, five by five cur uh, slanted window, so like we had the one by one, but it's five by five. So it'd be basically the large block one by ones. So what we end up doing is merging the top glass that was that little weird dot of a window with the longer piece of the window and bringing it down to meet the uh, second tier, and it gives it a much more I don't, I don't know how really to articulate better but fiercer look to the top end it doesn't look so blocky and so passive i don't know if that makes a lot of sense but it doesn't look a lot passive it doesn't look much more i don't know uh so another thing i try and do is working on the the front end the very front end and taking this giant curve bit and turning it into almost a continuous window with those struts to keep it more industrial looking and it, I thought it would end up very fishbowl looking, but it ended up very, um, like the ships from Atlantis, the animated movies, or the first animated movie of the two movies, I guess. And I really, really, really enjoyed it. And so that, that really was kind of the highlight of the, uh, this, vi this, uh, video. Because that ended up looking a lot better than I thought it would. So after that, we start working on kind of smoothing out the ridges that we made way long ago when we did this front end or at the bottom of the episode where we built the bottom there we go words can happen and we just take each uh, layer and kind of slant it down and make it smoother uh, one of the things that i noticed after getting through most of this was yes this looks good however it starts to 
not look as good as we get down to the uh, parts that we the ledges that we made farther on the bottom um, we're also going to be doing a lot of different uh, kind of holes I guess for the ship where we make a strut basically outside where we need to and then paint the inside black I don't know if those will be functional later but we do make a, a couple of them in this episode I think they add a bit of depth to the uh, ship without adding too much geometry and doesn't add a lot of space that we need to take care of otherwise it actually consumes much more space that's really what we need to do for the next couple episodes is just consume a ton of space uh, we're going to be doing some work next to the propeller things what are they called the VTOL engine things I forget what they're called. And we're basically making a giant shape that is going to just take up a whole bunch of space, but not give us a lot back. So it's definitely more aesthetics. When we get onto the inside, though, we're going to have to flip that completely because we want to add as much room as we can into the inside of the ship. I don't know how many people are supposed to be in the ship, though. I'm thinking... I don't think it should be over 30, though. So maybe aim for like a 20 or something, 20 something maybe, uh, crew size. So you have your bridge crew, your scientists, and I don't know if you need much more. So scientists, cartographers, and things like that. Is a cartographer still a cartographer if it's space? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. If you know, put it in the comments. Let me know. Um... So, like I said, we're just kind of smoothing out these other uh, ridges that we made. And this one, I think, is the last one that makes any sense. And then it gets kind of not as good later on. And we can't make it smoother. Because we don't have a 3 by 2 slant corner. Because those don't exist. I wish, I wish every slant existed i wish you could just stay from this point to this point and slant this way but that, that doesn't exist for this game and actually it doesn't exist for most games so there's that um i'm saying i'm way too much in this episode apparently i don't remember building a whole lot it's early late technically but yeah i almost always do this video way too late in the week Hopefully tomorrow, when this video actually goes out, I won't sit around all day, and I'll actually get some recording done so I can actually re remember what I do, and I'll be working it throughout the week. What I do want to do, and I can ask you guys help for this, is what do you think, or kind of like, what should be the mixture of crew in the ship? Remember this is a kind of a Pathfinder kind of ship? They're exploring the general area, kind of like um, kind of like the Enterprise, but not with all the political stuff that they do. It's simply chart stars, see what's out there. I was watching an episode where they found a Dyson Sphere, the one with uh, Scotty in it from the original series. And I was interested because they didn't stay very long. They just stayed to say, oh, it's a Dyson Sphere and nobody's here. They left the area and said we'll send we told Starfleet to send scientists there and that's kind of what this ship does it goes out to find stuff and then when it finds something it basically sends the appropriate scientists or sends word back wh who should come and find it if it's a habitable planet they'll go down and look and if it's a star of some significance or something rather some anomaly they'll send word back and they'll send the correct amount of uh, scientists um, on the note of planet side stuff, I want this to be kind of like a, a home base kind of thing, and that's kind of leading me towards cutting the um, hangar out and making it much bigger. I was thinking maybe if you guys remember back to the episode with the, when we built the hangar, uh, I tried fitting a pelican build that I found on the workshop into it. That's kind of the size I want, because the Pelican should be able to hold a small rover, plus an amount of people. Obviously, I wouldn't be using the Pelican itself, I'd make my own. But it would it'd be able to kind of take the supplies from the ship away from the ship, 
if that makes any, sh any sense. So it'd be kind of like the ship is a home base and then you have your rovers and things to go out on the terrain. So I don't know how much that's going to work on the ship. I also want to make a, um, a, a or a few smaller snub fighters, not fighters, but small ships to go in here. Uh, like two or three or something. Not two or three, uh, one or two. Kind of think like along the lines of the two ships on the uh, Firefly class in Firefly. Yeah, Firefly class transport. Yeah. And so they can kind of not move this ship as much if they need to. If they have an asteroid field that they're next to, they can take the little snub fighters. And they can also act like relays to this ship. So that's kind of the ideas I have for the ship in the longer term ish area so we're working now on a lot of the side sidings i'm trying to find a balance between smooth surfaces and noise or detail and what i end up doing is choosing a much smoother style than i thought i would and that's because it i don't know why but with this uh with the whole I guess it's a bug currently, but I don't know if they'll fix it. I kind of hope they don't fix the whole excuse me, uh, texture disappearing on the uh, armor slopes. Yeah. What do they call it? Armor ramps. Because it, it creates a very shiny surface, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, and it kind of looks that outer hole plainness that... I think I, I was kind of enjoying because it does, the outside doesn't need to be super detailed, especially with this shape that we have. This very dome, not really dome, but circular shape almost. It's kind of like a tunnel shape, arch shape, yeah, an arch shape. And making details on it is very, very difficult, and it's it was hard, and it made me frustrated, and that's probably why. I got a little less uh, less recorded than normal. I normally do two hours. This one's only about an hour and a half amount of uh, it's an hour and forty minutes of uh, recording. Uh, which do what does mean we get a little more recording or a little less speed. There we go. A little easier to watch. That's uh, why I said that last one was a bit jittery. That was a combination of I knew what I was doing and I was going through it pretty fast. Plus I sped two or more hours up. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't know where exactly you guys want the speed of the videos to be once I eventually am able to uh, build a new computer. I'll be using this one to record, so I'll be able to use it as a third-person camera. So I'll buy another copy of Space Engineers just to have in the world so I can have a much higher quality video. On that note, actually, didn't really plan this, but... Uh, I did have launched a Patreon, so if you guys want to support the channel and help me get to that new computer and eventually doing this full time, which would mean my bills are paid basically, and I don't need much. I've actually clocked my current bills to only three hundred dollars a month, so yay, being super thrifty, I suppose, and not getting stuff you don't need. Yay! Uh, so if you guys want to help me out there, go to the link in the description to my Patreon, and yeah, we'll be doing some interesting stuff for that. I'm planning to do a series, whether it be a tutorial series or just a normal series, specifically for patrons, and there'll be, uh, once we have Patreon, patrons, uh, there'll be live streams specifically for them, whether that be exclusive live streams or live streams where I only look at uh, Patreon chat through Discord or something, and I really need help on the Patreon to um, find out what exactly to do with it. So if you want to help me make things to do for patrons, for you, then go to Patreon and help me out there too, because I, I honestly don't know. So we're about at the end, we're just going to change this shape, where we invert this shape into the other... We convex it instead of convex? Concave? No, we concave it instead of convex. Convex is the outside. Instead of making it a bump out, we make it a bump in. And we do a bit of detailing for that. And I probably should have stayed in the world a bit longer to give myself a little bit more talking room at the end. But it's fine. Um, one of the things that this kind of led me to the decision to 
pump it in as I didn't want it to bump out because it left too much surface area on the wings quotations. And I also want it to look that more sciencey because we didn't have a lot of sciencey shapes around the wings or the turbines. We just had this very smooth surface everywhere else. So it helped give that sleeker kind of look. And we do add in this little like notch in the middle that kind of keeps that industrial kind of vibe in that. So that was that was nice. So that is all we got for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the Patreon page. And if you liked the video, subscribe for more. And like the video, leave a comment and all that stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.